to all the dispossessed youth of Africa for perpetuation of communion with ancestral spirits through the fight for African freedom and in the firm faith that the dead, the living and the unborn will unite to build the destroyed shrines. Hello and welcome, beloveds, to another special message from the Ancient Ones. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life uh, truly in your own narrative and in your own story. You know... It's so important for us right now to recognize the seasons and the times that we're in and not to take the Kool-Aid um, that many governments are trying to give us all this, you know, it's like a slow kill, if I can put it like that, and really to, do, to become as self-reliant uh, as possible and as disconnected from the Babylon system as possible because Babylon is falling. And the ancient ones wanted us to know today that, you know, the way we're seeing everything unraveling with the, you know, the way everything is being implemented with the mandatory uh, snake bites, etc., etc. Uh, we are now in the season where we're seeing, uh, you know, Babylon is actually racing against, well, they're not racing against time because time is their creation, but they're racing against the awakening of the people and the speed that this awakening is happening. And they want people to be caught fast footed and off guard as much as possible because they know that the more people awaken, they get themselves self-reliant. They, you know, they get off the Babylon system and they start moving spiritually, which makes, which makes them no longer a target. And for Babylon to continue to exist in the next world that they're trying to create this kind of prison planet, police planet, they literally need a certain number of like minions or, or, you know, energy slaves that they will be able to feed and run their planet on. So they can't afford to have too many people awaken. They want a very small percentage of people to awaken because this whole battle, and this is what the ancient ones wanted us to really recognize, that this whole battle is for the group consciousness of humanity. Each people has different messiahs who have come to fight for the group consciousness of their people, the melanated ones. We have our gods, our goddesses, our saviors, our messiahs, our chosen ones, our ancient ones, all here battling to raise the frequency of that group consciousness so that it's not fragmented and we don't lose the majority of the people. And every race has their, you know, every community has their people doing the same thing. Every queendom, the fire nations, the air nations, the earth nations, the water nations, because they don't want their, any fragment of themselves to go into the copy paste world that Babylon is going to create. But you see, many will walk into that world mentally and they will feed that for you know, until another awakening season comes, whenever that may be. But why wait? So right now, Babylon is panicking because so many people are coming online and they really can't afford to have that. So that's why we're seeing such rapid implementations of everything. Like they've taken some bold moves with the global lockdowns and then the mandatory things that they're trying to now instill and how it's so obvious that we're in a one world government, if you look at it, and how the presidents across the world, whether you're in Africa or Europe or Latin America or Asia, they're all talking the same language. That's because Babylon is rapidly implementing the new world order so it can get as many minds as possible to create their fake matrix, their fake patrix, their fake world. And at the same time, so many people are waking up and jumping off board. Which is why they've been trying to cap people's consciousness. So it's really important to recognize why this is happening and to recognize that, you know, Babylon is about um, reaching a consensus of consciousness. 
reaching a consensus of thought where in when enough people believe a thing because the mental creates the physical and we're in a mental world as much as this physical world seems more real for the people whose first eye is still closed but the minute something reaches a consensus it becomes reality i've talked about the tipping point so many times the hundredth monkey effect these are things you should definitely just know so that's what Babylon pushes. They push this fear, they, you know, they use their fear-mongering mainstream media to push all these stories. And then they have their minions. And then the minute that fear reaches a certain number of people who accept it and then it bubbles over, it now becomes reality. And because we weren't brought up with science, but with religion, which is total brainwashing, brain prison, actually, mental prison, mental colonialism, we don't know the science of just how things work. And they're relying on us to somehow help them survive the fall of Babylon and leap into this crazy prison planet where they'll be living large and everyone else will be living small. Like they have no good plans for those that follow their way. It would almost be better to give up your life than to go that way, beloved, seriously. I mean, that's the, that's the point where when you become awakened to what has going on and to who you really are and to how many times you've been here, these are some of the things that you start to really, you know, recognize it's true for yourself. Like you don't want to give up this inheritance. You don't want to give up what comes next because of a moment of weakness now. So knowing that that is happening, what can we be doing about it? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Welcome back, beloveds, to a special message from the Ancient Ones. My name is Dr. Mumbi Seraki. We're in a race between education and catastrophe. I think that's it's Janet Jackson who said that in one of her songs. But really, that's the kind of season and time that we're in. And Babylon is in a full bench press, beloveds. They are implementing their one. We're already in a one world government. Then now, you know, soon we're going to be seeing mandatory situations and then we're going to see the one world police rolled out. Like, it's about to get that serious, beloveds. And so knowing that, because you see, they didn't anticipate the spiral effect, the domino effect of the awakening, of how many people are awakening at such a time as this everywhere across the world, whether they have access to the information or not. There's so much that they're doing to try and stifle and control the awakening, controlling the information, um, censoring nearly absolutely everything, which makes it harder and harder for the truth to get out. But the truth is getting out anyway, because many are discovering the truth inside of themselves, inside their own hearts. They, they just know, they instinctually know this is wrong and this is right. No one needs to tell them. They don't need proof. They don't need to do the research. And then for those who need the research and need the proof, there's so many whistleblowers, people who are taking great risks to their lives and to their family lives to expose some of the lies that we are being, you know, fed at such a time as this. So what can we do about it? What role can we play? I think the most important thing is to ensure that we hold the fort, we hold our vibration, and we continuously raise that vibration higher and higher, because that is what is changing it. It's not so much what we're doing physically as the fact that we're here spiritually and our presence is here spiritually. And you know, the more you awaken, the more you'll feel like in your dream state, it's not even a dream state, but you're, you're going and coming. You're participating in so many other things. So there's so much that's going on. So one thing is just not to fall into, not to be drawn into the Babylon system in any way whatsoever. And to just keep, you know, keep a total focus on your own growth, on your own expansion, on your own ascension, as they like to call it, and on your own, you know, on your own refinement, making sure that you're good, making sure that you go into nature making sure that you've stocked up enough food, like do what you need to do for you. That's the most important thing. And hold your vibration. 
make sure you're meditating every day make sure you're just you know vibing every day with nature make sure you're you're envisioning you're scripting the next that you see for humanity for your own life etc etc make sure you're putting it into the atmosphere every day that we win in the end and this is the end we don't know how but we win and leadership comes to us as the underdog we are the underdog and we win like that that's a kind of like steady chant that we need to have there's the constant meditation that we need to have but focusing on our spiritual will do so much more for humanity than trying to do anything for humanity physically at such a time as this because it's like the entire system has been rigged it's like when someone comes and they're like i'm awakened i'm gonna run for president i always look at them like it's an oxymoron because that means you're going back down into their vibes so we have to learn how to change things spiritually. And that's one of the things we can be working on. Put some intentions out there and see how quickly they manifest. Start with your own life. See how quickly they manifest. I mean, it's also good to put intentions for the world because you're not as, you know, sometimes our own life was so emotionally attached that we can, we can influence the decision minute by minute. But, you know, start making intentions for the world and see how that happens. Because Babylon is racing against the awakening of the people. Because they know when we reach the tipping point of awakening, everything changes and they won't be able to control the people anymore. And you see, it's all about consensus consciousness. Reaching a point of where enough people believe a thing. Enough people see a thing as real that it becomes real. Because we're in a mental world having a physical experience. And the mental world build and orchestrates and orders the physical experience. These are such exciting times, beloveds. But it all depends on what narrative you're latching yourself onto. Stay uplifted. That's the best thing you can do. When people are, bro you know, when people come to you for information, share. You'll feel the discernment in your heart. And just know we win in the end. Tuko pamoja. Thank you.